Support for this podcast and the following message come from Money Mind from Prudential, a podcast powered by your financial behavior. Hear insights from financial psychologists, experts, and more. Download and subscribe to Money Mind wherever you find podcasts and learn more at slate.com slash money mind. Hey, here's a great way to listen to Ask Me Another on your commute or while making dinner, NPR One. It's an app for your phone, kind of like Pandora, but for public radio, and it's full of news, podcasts, including Ask Me Another. So whenever you're ready to listen, NPR One has something great just for you. Find it in your app store, NPR O-N-E. From NPR and WNYC, coming to you from the Bell House in beautiful Brooklyn, New York, it's NPR's Hour of Puzzles, Word Games, and Trivia, Ask Me Another. Now here's your host, Ophira Eisenberg. Thank you, Jonathan Colton. We have a great show for you. Eight contestants are here to play our nerdy games, but only one will win our grand prize provided by our VIP. And when we found out this VIP was joining us, everyone on staff had a different reaction. We had a wow, an OMG, a get out of town, a great Scott, even a suffering succotash. <laughs> but you know, the only true accurate reaction is, oh my. <laughs> Our VIP is George Takei. George will be joining us a little later to talk about his musical allegiance, his social media dominance, and of course, Star Trek. But let's get things started with our first two contestants. Now, John Garvey, you're a high school teacher in the Bronx. Thank you. No problem. What is your favorite animal video that you've ever seen? Uh, it's, it's a very popular one. It's a small panda sneezing and scaring a larger panda. Yeah. I know, because you're like, how, how could it be it, so scary? Exactly. It seems like they put a lot of work into mating pandas, but for that video, totally worth it. <laughs> Fair enough. Daniel Meltzer, you're a radiologist. That's right. Do you have a favorite animal video? Uh, yeah, it's the one where the guy has the camera panned on his dog's face, and he's talking, but his, he's not in the camera. I'm saying, so Rex, last night I snuck down to raid the refrigerator, and the dog's like, mm. and, uh, there was a piece of hamburger, mm. and some bacon, mm. and some cheddar cheese, mm. and I put it all together, mm. and I give it to the cat. <laughs> I can tell you have only watched that once. <laughs> Well, we have an adorable game for you, too. It's called Creature Feature. So each answer is just two words. It's an animal and a word that rhymes with the animal. Oh, adorable. Jonathan Colton, house musician. Yes. Can you give us an example? I'd be happy to. So if I said, celebrate your pet python's birthday by baking it one of these, you would answer snake Snake cake. cake. Yeah, you get it. All right, so the animal is going to be the first word in the clue. And buzz in when you know the answer. Of course, the winner will move on to our final round at the end of the show. Here we go. This red crustacean gangster boils his enemies alive and then serves them with butter. Dan. Lobster mobster? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. (laughs) If you need a place for your great white or hammerhead to play, take it to this recreational outdoor space. John. A shark park. That is correct. Blackbeard's shoulder bird loves these typically orange root vegetables. Dan. Parrot carrot. Parrot carrot, that's right. I simply love the phrase shoulder bird. Yeah. It's not a lap chicken, is it? No, it's not. Mufasa drives a boxy car made by a division of Toyota. John. A lion scion? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is what happens when you cross a gazelle with the worst part of a fruit salad. People are already taking offense. John. A GNU cashew? 
I don't like cashews. It's, a, it's an interesting answer. I, <laughs> Do you hear what he says? I don't I like don't, cashews. Yeah, so he just went in his mind to whatever he doesn't like. <laughs> Maybe you don't like it's cashews because you keep eating them in fruit salad. That's disgusting. <laughs> can't eat a cashew in a fruit salad. Dan, do you have a guess? Uh, an Impala berry. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's also incorrect. We were looking for antelope cantaloupe. Uh, I know, because for some reason, the person who wrote this decided that the worst part of a fruit salad is an antelope. I don't think that's... <laughs> <laughs> this is your last clue. Here's a gift idea for the working male bovine in your life. Argyle footwear. They rhyme. <laughs> it's not the shoes. Not the shoes. The other things you put on your feet. Dan. Yak socks. <laughs> Did you say yak socks? I kind of made a diphthong to yeah, make him sure. rhyme a little you, more. I, you said yak, but you said yak song. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I don't think we can accept that. I'm sorry, Dan. That was a valiant effort, but we can't accept it because it does not actually rhyme, even though you said it as if it did. <laughs> like he's gonna slide it by. <laughs> John, do you know what the answer is? A boar sock. <laughs> I appreciate you didn't even try to make those rhyme, John. That is also incorrect. Does anybody know the answer? Ox socks. Ox socks. That's what we were looking for. Puzzle guru, Art Chung, how did our brave contestants do? Well, we have a tie. <laughs> Hands on your buzzers. Here we go. This feline headgear was made famous by Dr. Seuss. John. Cat in the hat? Cat hat, that's what we're looking for. Congratulations, John. You're moving on to the final round. Our next two contestants are joining us on stage. John Bilancini, you're a lawyer. That's correct. But I'm more a importantly, you're a six time New York City trivia champion. That is also correct, yeah. Going for seven at the end of the month. Okay, now if you lose today, do you lose your title? I don't think they're related. Uh, I can check with the person who actually runs the competition, though. Um, <laughs> I'm hoping no. Is that Mayor de Blasio? <laughs> he may consult this year. Okay, I don't really okay. know. Good. Good to know. And hello, Hannah Kennedy. You work for an online furniture company. You also recently crocheted a beluga for your friend's wife. Yeah, I did. Okay, here's my first question. Why? <laughs> Well, that's simple. She really likes belugas. And you crochet, and you thought, I'm going to put this together. Was there, there an occasion? I had previously crocheted, um, at the request of her husband, a ham that's about <laughs> hand size. <laughs> um, oh, crocheted hand ham? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're familiar with that no, genre? I got, you, you should have just asked me. I got a bunch of them. I would have given them one. <laughs> you have shelves of hand hams? Cro shelves of crocheted <laughs> hams. <laughs> This next game is one of our very favorites. It's called This, That, or The Other. We're going to give you a title, and all you have to do is tell us which of three categories it belongs to. And today's categories are Agatha Christie novels, travel channel shows, and movies starring Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen, <laughs> otherwise known as the Olsen twins. So I'm going to throw something out, and you just have to guess... Is it an Agatha Christie novel, travel channel show, or Olsen Twins movie? Buzz in, and the winner will move on to our final round at the end of the show. Here we go. Baggage battles. John. I'm going to go with the travel channel show. Exactly. An obvious one, but correct. Passport to Paris. John. Agatha Christie. Sorry, that is incorrect. Hannah, do you have a guess? I do, and I know it. It's a Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen movie. <laughs> have you enjoyed this 1999 film? I did probably when I was nine, but I do know that there's an actor in it who's Italian who's on a really great Italian soap opera. He's very good looking. All right, here's your next one Destination Unknown. John. Uh, travel Challenge Show. That is incorrect. Hannah, can you steal? 
I'm going to guess an Agatha Christie novel. Yes! <laughs> However, John, Destination Unknown is the best travel channel show of all time. <laughs> Hard to promote, because uh, you never know where they're going. <laughs> But it's an Agatha Christie novel, also known as So Many Steps to Death, which I think should also be a travel channel show. <laughs> Reality show? So Many Steps to Death. Your number is 24. <laughs> Start walking. And see where you get. Holiday in the Sun. John? I am going to go... Oh, shoot. Um... <laughs> You know, let's go Olsen Twins. Let's go correct. <laughs> Hannah, did you know that one? I did, and I thought I rang in first, but I guess yeah. not. I know. <laughs> I know. You might like a show called So Many Steps to Death. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make that show so badly. <laughs> Mysteries at the Museum. John. Uh, that's a Travel Channel show. That is a Travel Channel show, yes. <laughs> when in Rome. John. Agatha Christie. Mm. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. Yeah. Hannah? I think that's actually the one with the Italian guy. Uh, that's Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen. <laughs> I know, you thought you saw the one, Mary Kate, and there's I, 12 I, of them. Yeah, Yeah. There, there's a lot. I've seen most of their things at of one Of their point. oeuvre? You've experienced most of their oeuvre? Most of the oeuvre, yes. Okay. Uh, yes, When in Rome is a Olsen twins movie. That is correct. Third girl. John. I'm going to go Agatha Christie again this time. <laughs> yes, that is correct. Or a prequel to the Olsen twin movies. They started with three. That's right. This is when the three girls go on a show called So Many Steps to Death. <laughs> Let me turn to our puzzle guru, Art Chung. How did our contestants do? They both did great, but John, congratulations. You're moving on to the final round at the end of the show. Coming up, our special guest, George Takei, steers our Starship Trivia to Deep Voice 9 as he proves he can change the course of any bit of prose with the power of his pipes. So stay tuned. I'm Ophira Eisenberg, and you're listening to Ask Me Another from NPR. Let's take a moment to thank and share a message from our sponsor, LearnVest. LearnVest is an online financial advice company focused on empowering people nationwide to make smart decisions with their money. If you want to know how aggressively to pay down your student loans, LearnVest can help with that. If you want to know how much you should put aside for saving, they can do that too. Or how much you should contribute to your retirement account. Yep, they're on it. They'll create a custom financial plan to answer those questions. Plus, they'll pair you with a financial planner to help you keep on track. To see a sample plan and get a $50 credit, go to learnvest.com slash another. Hey, before you get back to the show, here in the U.S., Tuesday, October 4th, is the only vice presidential debate. And the next morning, the NPR Politics Podcast is inviting you to skip the cable news hangover and get caught up with them. They'll have new podcast episodes the morning after every debate so you will know what happened and what it means by the time you get to work or class. So whatever your morning routine is, make the NPR Politics Podcast part of it the morning of October 5th after the vice presidential debate. Subscribe or listen on the NPR One app. This is Ask Me Another, NPR's hour of puzzles, word games, and trivia. I'm your host, Ophira Eisenberg, and with me here is our house musician, Jonathan Colton. Now please welcome our VIP, you know him as Sulu from Star Trek, and he also inspired and stars in the musical 
allegiance. Please welcome our VIP, George Takei. Oh, my. <laughs> In the middle of the warehouse district of Brooklyn, I had no idea you all existed right here. I've listened to you on Howard Stern for years. Oh <laughs> and you have such a joyful personality, just full of positivity and glee. And I, I just have to ask you, what is the secret to your happiness? Well, the thing is, you have to... My grandmother lived to 104 years old, and I think part of her uh, success yeah. was that she woke up every morning to a brand new day. She said every morning is a new gift. Her favorite uh, hobby was collecting birthdays. <laughs> when she was 90, she was telling people she's 91. And we'd tell her, no, no, Bachan, you're 90. And she says, no, no. I'm counting the Japanese way. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. George, you co-created and star in the musical Allegiance. Now, the show takes place during World War II when the American government forced Americans of Japanese descent into internment camps. And a very personal story. And, and, and because it's based on your life. Well, actually, more my parents' life. Your I parents was a life. kid then. Yeah. From five years old to eight and a half years old. And... Uh, my real memories of my imprisonment are uh, actually fun memories. I, you know, uh, for a kid, as long as you have your parents nearby. I remember the barbed wire fence and the sentry towers, but I also remember the uh, fun I had with other kids. And we were in Arkansas, uh, the first camp we went, uh, went to in the swamps, and catching pollywogs in the creek and watching them sprout legs and turn into frogs. And then the second camp we were uh, in was much harsher in Northern California, right by the Oregon border. But one of the ironic memories I have is um, I began school in a black tar paper barrack. And uh, every morning we began the school day with the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Right. I could see the barbed wire fence and the sentry tower right outside my schoolhouse window as I recited the words, with liberty and justice for all. We're telling this story as a musical. And yes, most why people a musical? Are, you know, yeah. uh, they uh, burst out guffawing when, <laughs> when I tell them that. Because the other part of uh, the internment experience is resilience. When we were first in prison, people were all wrapped up in themselves, in their gloom and doom and self-pity. And my father was a block manager in both camps that we were in. Hardship. And yes. he said, we've got to survive this, and we're going to survive it as a community. And he organized a baseball team, and we created a production number out of the baseball uh, game called Gotta Get In The Game. And also <laughs> the message is, you got to work in concert with others. So we... Uh, balance both the suffering and the pain as well as the strength and the uh, the tenacity to be able to find joy. Life has to go on. Just you talking about this sort of combining, you know, the, the dark and the, the more joyous to create this thing, you know, it it's actually very much in all the work you do. I'm just thinking you are a social media sensation. You have, what, 1.7 million Twitter followers. Uh, but it's nine a mi million plus Facebook followers. <laughs> <laughs> Broken. Thank you. I have many friends here. <laughs> and it's a real mixture. I mean, you, your feed has a lot of crazy stuff uh, from the interwebs that you find funny, some wordplay, but there's also a lot of political activism. Mm -hmm. uh, is that sort of the ultimate plan to lure people in? With the, <laughs> the fun, you wacky catch stuff. catch more flies with honey <laughs> than with vinegar. <laughs> but is that a conscious thing that you're like, Absolutely oh, okay. it is. Yes, ma'am. All right. It works great. It works. It works. <laughs> but by trial and error, you know, I made that discovery. And it's a sharing medium. Yeah. So they send in their memes and their little witticisms, and I share it with everybody. And they're flattered that I shared it. And 
I get the credit for it. <laughs> Now, this is, it's the 50th uh, anniversary of Star Trek. Now, when you auditioned way back then, were they looking specifically for a character named Sulu? Or was that written once they found you? No, no. He want, Gene Roddenberry, the yeah. creator of Star Trek, had this vision, the Starship Enterprise, is a metaphor for Starship Earth. And the strength of the Starship lay in its diversity, coming together, and like my father's baseball team, working in concert as a team, as a group of people working together. And uh, so each character was to represent some part of the diversity of this spaceship Earth. And the character was devised as an Asian character. Okay. And he wanted to find a name that was Pan-Asian, that suggested mm. all of Asia so that we don't have this nationalistic uh, division. And he found out off the coast of the Philippines, the Sulu Sea. He thought, ah, the waters of a sea touch all shores. And so that's how he came up with the name Sulu. Huh. And when he uh, cast a Japanese-American, right. me, at, uh, in that character, he decided to give him a Japanese first name, Hikaru Sulu. How close do you think we are to that idealized society that was shown in Star Trek in the 1960s. How close are we? It's a constant struggle. I believe whatever number you give me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to give you a number, but an example. <laughs> yes. Uh, we in California had marriage equality in 2008. Before that, we, there was an even more uh, exciting thing that happened. In 2005, both houses of the, of the California le state legislature passed the uh, marriage equality bill. It was a uh, groundbreaking uh, action. All that was needed was, was a signature of our governor, that one person who happened to be a movie star, right. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right. When he campaigned for the office, he said, I'm from Hollywood. I've worked with gays and lesbians. Some of my favorite friends are gays and lesbians. <laughs> yes. So we thought surely he would sign the bill. When the bill landed on his desk, he played to his conservative Republican base, and he vetoed it. And I was so angry, so raging that... Did you uh, call him? No, I went out on the streets. Nice. <laughs> I called a press conference, and I came out publicly. And I've been out ever since. I'm sure you get this a lot, uh, but talking to you kind of gives me hope for the oh, future. Oh, you've got to have hope. You, you, you know, pessimism will get you nowhere. In fact, pessimists are already defeated. It's the optimists that get things done. People who have hope. People who aspire. People who see things better, right? A bunch of people in a Brooklyn warehouse are like, wait a second, I've never thought of it that way. You gotta, you're in a darkened warehouse. <laughs> That's you? right. You gotta have hope. <laughs> George Takei, would you like to help us with a game? I'd be more than happy to if it's going to make people happy. I think it might. <laughs> Do you want to play a little something there, Jonathan? Yeah, I'm going to play a little something. A lot of people don't know this. Uh, there are lyrics to the original Star Trek theme. <laughs> this is true. They were written by Gene Roddenberry. They go like this. Beyond the rim of the starlight My love is wandering in starflight I know he'll find in star-clustered reaches Love, strange love, a star woman teaches. I know his journey ends never. His star track will go on forever. But tell him while he wanders his starry sea. Remember me. Jonathan, 
Kevin Colton, everybody. So we've beamed two contestants to our stage. They are sparkling. <laughs> Mary Godwin, you're a Spanish lit teacher, and you're related to a famous author. Who is it? I am um, Mary Shelley. She wrote Frankenstein. What? Yes. Yeah. Pero usted story. Uh, es un, uh, una profesora de literatura uh, español. Sí. Soy maestra de español. Qué interesante. Sí. Gracias. <laughs> qué, qué bien hablas. You guys are going to help us get a lot more listeners. <laughs> This is NPR, right? <laughs> yes, it's NPR. Ken Cooper, a composer and lyricist, what is the most boring thing you can think of? Uh, I'd have to go with the David Lynch movie. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, not, I'm not winning this congeniality with that one. I don't one, know. Huh? It's divided. Yeah. Mary Godwin, what is the most boring thing you can think of? I know it's a very healthy way to start your day, but I can't think of anything any more boring than a bowl of oatmeal. <laughs> <laughs> it's very healthy, though. <laughs> very healthy. A lot of rough Packed with fiber. <laughs> <laughs> so George has such a smooth, deep voice. Anything he says goes down like a fine whiskey. So in this game, we are putting that to the test. George will read a boring set of instructions. <laughs> And you will buzz in and tell us what the instructions are for. <laughs> and the winner will move on to the final round at the end of the show. Right. Take it away, George. Apply to wet hair. <laughs> Working into a gentle lather with fingertips. Rinse well. <laughs> Mary. I'm saying shampoo. You are saying the right thing. <laughs> That was an easy one. Yeah, that was, that was, like, they get harder. Yes. Add boiling water. <laughs> Stir in cold water. Refrigerate four hours or until firm. Amazing. Ken. Jello. Jello is correct. <laughs> Another easy one. These all sound, with your deep voice, they sound very um, flirtatious. That's a nice word for erotic. <laughs> erotic. <laughs> Better when you say it. I oh. hope it's that kind of show. Oh, yes. <laughs> I know this ain't the Howard Stern show. <laughs> Oh, I, I can't wait for you to read the next one. The first line is fantastic. Make a fist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the minds you people have. <laughs> Place it above the person's belly button. Well below the rib cage. Pull sharply inward and upward. <laughs> Mary. Those are instructions for doing the Heimlich maneuver. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Couldn't leave you astray. <laughs> I'm certified. <laughs> Next one. Uh, let's do it. There are five different types of resources. Grain, brick, <laughs> ore, lumber, and wool. Resource production is determined by the roll of the dice at the beginning of each turn. Ken. Uh, Settlers of Catan? Is that it? <laughs> It's a very popular game. Stroke gently around the upper ear without entering the ear canal. Ken. Q-tips? Q-tips, yeah. <laughs> oh, the kinds of minds you have. <laughs> All right, we just have a couple left. This one is very specific. Don't be a pole hog. 
Leave room for others to hold on. In other words, share the pool. <laughs> Mary, those are instructions from the MTA on how to be a good writer on the subway. Yes, they are. All right, unfortunately, this is our last clue. Ah, uh, here it is. Push the pulse button, which will cause the pulse indicator to light to flash. Next, push and release the desired speed button. Repeat as desired. <laughs> you determine the duration of each pulse. Ken. Is that a treadmill? I don't have the answer. You do. Yeah. I, uh, if that is a treadmill, I'm going to start running immediately. Uh, no, it is not Mary. I just got a mani-pedi this weekend, and that sounds a lot like a massage chair I was in. Oh, massage chair. No, I'm sorry. The answer was a blender or a food processor. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew blender? Now you're getting the hang of it. <laughs> yeah. That's a sexy blender. That is a sexy blender. Oh, my goodness. Arch, Chung, Puzzle Guru, how did our contestants do? We have a tie. Wow. <laughs> I can't compete with George for the sexy voice, so it's a straightforward question. <laughs> what company provides word-free assembly instructions for furniture items such with names like Billy, Doxa, and Meltorp? <laughs> Ken. Ikea. That's correct. Congratulations. We're moving on to the final round. Uh, thank you so much, George. I have to ask you, would you be up for and ask me another challenge of your own? Sure, All why right. not? George Takei, everybody. If you want to be an Ask Me Another contestant, here are your totally thrilling instructions. Step one, go to amatickets.org. Step two, drop us a note. We'll send you our contestant quiz. Step three, add flavor packet and stir. Coming up, George Takei sets our phasers to pun. I'm Ophira Eisenberg, and this is Ask Me Another from NPR. Support for this podcast and the following message comes from Blunt Talk, a quirky and outrageous stars original comedy created by Jonathan Ames and executively produced by Seth MacFarlane. The series follows Walter Blunt, played by Patrick Stewart, a British import intent on conquering the world of American cable news. And this season, Blunt is at the top of the network ratings, but he still manages to find himself in some bizarre scenarios along with his band of dysfunctional newsroom co-workers. Season 2 premieres Sunday, October 2nd, at 8.30 p.m. on Stars and on the new Stars app. This is NPR's Ask Me Another. I'm your host, Ophira Eisenberg, here with our puzzle guru, Art Chung, and our house musician, Jonathan Colton. <laughs> and our next two contestants, Jesse Suto. You are a marketer for a large bank. That is correct. Exciting. But you've also appeared in infomercials. Are you, uh, do you audition for that? Yeah, I was a little bit of a child star. My friend's dad growing up was a local Raffi-like object, and so I was you know, generic kid in background and sang back up on the wheels on the bus on some of his oh albums. My God. You know, I've recovered pretty well. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. And Meredith Brooks, you're a student at Rutgers. Excellent. Yes. What are you studying? Human resource management. Wow, that yeah. sounds... Like it has potential? Yeah, I think. <laughs> yeah, good. Uh, you have a favorite piece of trivia about Hillary Clinton. Yeah. So why don't you share with us? Um, Hillary Clinton won a Grammy Award. And what does she have a Grammy for? She won something for an audio book that she recorded in the 90s. Nope. Not the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not. Nah. I know, that's like Lady Gaga winning an award for acting. Yeah. Jesse, what do you miss most about being a teenager? 
And I think it would have to be the, the laundry disappearing from the floor and magically reappearing oh. clean and folded. You know what? It's nice that you noticed that. I think your parents would be very proud. I don't know who did proud. it, but yeah. yeah. You don't know who did it. <laughs> Meredith, you were a teenager not long ago. Yeah, I just turned 21 in November. Yeah, sure. Um, smart thing to say in a bar. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> My friends and I would always gather in large groups of people and we'd just hang around the mall. And I feel like I can't do that now because the mall has a purpose to shop. Yeah, because it'd be creepy as an adult to just hang around yeah. the mall. Now I see kids that are 14 and 15 yeah. at the mall doing what I used to do, and it's really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a music game. I'm going to hand it over to Jonathan Colton. And Jonathan, I have something I need to tell you. Okay. You make me feel like I'm living in a teenage dream. And by that, I mean I have way too much eyeshadow on, I'm paranoid that nobody likes me, and I'm failing physics. That's my teenage a, dream. Come on. Don't be like that. You're great at physics. <laughs> Thanks. Ophira is, of course, uh, referring to the Katy Perry song, Teenage Dream, mm -hmm. which we have rewritten to be about less romantic teenage things. <laughs> so channel your inner teenager and buzz in when you know the answer. The winner will move on to our final round, and the loser will stomp upstairs, slam the door, and yell, you're not my real dad. <laughs> Here we go. You think I'm pretty, but I've got a mouth of tin A bunch of metal, the food always gets stuck in My orthodontist is causing a constant frown Frown Meredith Braces Braces, that's right Did you have braces, Meredith? Yeah Was it terrible? Not really Alright I wanted braces. I wanted them super you wanted badly. Braces. I wanted bad. Why? Yeah, really badly. Because the rich kids got the braces. Oh. So. <laughs> Poor kids just had crooked teeth. Yep. Yeah. It's a great story. Thanks for no bringing the room down. Just showing you that there's many angles to the braces thing. Okay, we're just gonna cut this all out. Cut this all out later. <laughs> Let's go all the way today to the D. MV, then alone, I'll steer away, cause I can't ditch this learner's permit. Meredith. License? Yes, driver's license, that's correct. <laughs> this makes me feel pretty nervous, I fill the bubbles with my pencil, I hope my score is high enough for my college of choice my college of choice jesse would that be the sats it would be the sats you got it now i never took the sats is it true that if you use a number three pencil you get electrocuted that's right <laughs> not at the time of taking the test so they come to your house later and electrocute you. <laughs> I'll sit still, look slightly to the side, try to smile, hope I don't close my eyes, hurry up, just take the shot for this annual thing, this annual thing. Meredith. School picture. School picture. Puzzle Guru Rao Chung. Uh, what would you take that school picture for? Yearbook. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Now, Meredith, you lied about being 21, so let me ask this. <laughs> did you have your yearbook picture photoshopped? I think I did. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesse? That was not an option. When I know! Yeah, I didn't have that either. That would have changed everything. Oh, my God. It never even occurred to me you could... Oh, my God. Yes! I think, I think you could write down, like, certain blemishes you saw in the picture, and they would... Like, right. correct them. Remove nose. Yeah. That sort of thing. <laughs> Just change where it is. Right. <laughs> Add third eye. <laughs> Here comes my birthday, and I'm gonna celebrate a super number that carries a certain weight two years from voting. But I hope to get a car. Get a car. Jesse. Sweet 16. Sweet 16. You got it. When I just 
Spoke on the phone, came out high Then low, I guess it's just Testosterone that explains This annoying cracking <laughs> Meredith Puberty Puberty Yeah Ooh, That's right <laughs> This is your last clue They make me feel like I'm full of smiles I love Zane no, I love Harry Styles. I just scream. They're all so cute. I will marry them all. Will marry them all. Jesse. One Direction. Yeah. <laughs> well done. Uh, <laughs> all right, Chug, how did our contestants do? They both did amazing. Our recent teenager, Meredith, has won this round. Congratulations. Now please welcome back our VIP star of the Broadway musical Allegiance, George Takei. <laughs> now George, you have a catchphrase, which is, I'll do my impression, oh my. It's okay, it's okay. But what is the origin of that becoming your catchphrase? Well, I've been saying that, as I'm sure all of you do, uh, have been, throughout your life. I mean, it's a common phrase, oh my, you know. You see a beautiful sunrise, oh my, you know. You see um, a horrible, nasty thing, oh my, you know. It's a very versatile phrase. One mistake I made was saying it on a certain person's radio show. Oh. I didn't know that certain person from Adam at all. But I was doing a play here in New York, and we, when you're doing a play, you're given an assignment to go and talk about the play, um, you know, radio, television. And one morning I had this address on Madison Avenue, and I went there to uh, do that promotional gig. And I was in the waiting room uh, <laughs> flipping through magazines, and they had this radio show on. It was the most disgusting conversation. <laughs> it was the Howard Stern show. Yeah. And I said to the other guy uh, sitting there also, why don't they get some nice music on? You know, this discussion is really disgusting. And he said, that's the show we're waiting to go on. <laughs> and then the woman came and said, we're ready for you in the, in the, uh, in the studio, and ushered me in. And here's this skinny, tall, wild-haired guy with glasses uh, sitting behind the mic. And I said to him, good morning. And he says, oh, you have a deep voice. You must have a big dong. <laughs> I said, are we on the air? And he said, yep. And I said, oh my. <laughs> and he had it on tape. So whether I'm there or not, whenever someone says or does something outrageous, he presses a button and my voice comes on saying, oh my. <laughs> And it's become my personal catchphrase. <laughs> Fantastic. We've spent a lot of time reading your Twitter feed, and we know that you love wordplay. So we've crafted a game just for you. Uh, every answer will be a word or phrase mashed up with your catchphrase. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Let's go to our puzzle guru, Art Chung, for an example. So if we asked, what would you say at Chipotle if you wanted to order the least spicy salsa? You'd say... Oh, mild. <laughs> so every answer will begin with oh my and will be mashed up with something that starts with the word or sound my. Uh, and here's what's on the line. If you do well enough, Deirdre LaRock from Colorado Springs and you will both win Ask Me Another Rubik's Cubes. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you laughed at that. <laughs> we'll give it a shot. We'll see how it rolls. <laughs> What would you say if you suffered from splitting headaches, usually on one side of the head? Oh, my. My bed. <laughs> Probably is what you'd say. <laughs> you might also say, oh, migraine. 
Oh, oh, I see. <laughs> My imagination doesn't go that far. <laughs> How's your pop culture? Um, reasonable. Okay. <laughs> What if you met the star who loves party in the USA and comes in like a wrecking ball? I give up. <laughs> you, all, you guys obviously know. Well, we have the answers in front of us. That's the only reason we know. So, Miley Cyrus, we're like, oh, Miley Cyrus. Oh, oh my, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, I got a perfect record. So far, three. so good. <laughs> This is your last one. We're okay. Going perfect, right. going for a perfect record. How about if you just couldn't get enough of the musical based on George Bernard Shaw's play Pygmalion? It's got to begin with the word my. And that's it. And that's it. A title of Oh, a... My Fair Lady. The audience loves that. I'm a theater buff. Yes. <laughs> you know, in Hawaii, they call mainland Japanese Americans. They have a lot of Japanese Americans in Hawaii. But they look down on us mainland Japanese Americans. They call us kotonks. And the reason for that is when you knock on a mainland Japanese American's head, it goes kotonk because it's so empty. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. George, it was unbelievable having you on my stage. If you are one of the two people left who are not following George Takei on Twitter, he is at George Takei. Let's hear it one more time for a special guest. Come see Allegiance. Come see Allegiance. Now we're going to crown this week's big winner. Let's bring back John Garvey, John Bilancini, Ken Cooper, and Meredith Brooks. They'll be playing our final round, led by our puzzle guru, Art Chung. Take it away. Thanks, Sophia. This final round is called America the Foodiful. All the answers will be a food or drink that has an American geographic location in its name. For example, if I said, they're small, spicy chicken parts served with blue cheese dressing, that would be buffalo wings. We're playing the spelling bee style, so one wrong answer and you're out. You only have a few seconds to give me that answer, and the last person standing is our big winner. Your prize is an Ask Me Another Rubik's Cube and a swag bag from George Takei, including his books, Oh My, There Goes the Internet, and Lions and Tigers and Bears, The Internet Strikes Back, plus a poster from the musical Allegiance signed by George and the cast. Remember, every answer is something you eat or drink featuring the name of a place in America. Here we go. John Garvey. It's fast food with a southern colonel mascot played by Norm MacDonald. Kentucky Fried Chicken. Now that's right. John B. This inside-out, non-raw sushi is typically made with faux crab meat, avocado, and cucumber. California roll. Correct. Ken, it's a Nabisco cookie not named for Sir Isaac, but for a city in Massachusetts. Fig Newton. You got it. <laughs> Meredith, this beverage company, famous for their 23-ounce cans of iced tea, is really based in Woodbury, New York, and not a southwestern state. Bristol. No, I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Can you step aside? John G. Arizona iced tea. That is correct. Meredith, thank you for playing. John B., it's a milk or cream-based soup from the Northeast made from mollusks, potatoes, onions, and definitely not tomatoes. New England clam chowder. That's right. <laughs> Ken, this dessert made with ice cream and sponge cake and topped with a browned meringue is named after a very northern state. Three seconds. Key lime pie. I don't know. No, I'm sorry. That's incorrect. Baked Alaska. That's right. John G., correct. 
Ken, thank you for playing. We are down to the two Johns. John B., a folded egg dish filled with diced ham, onions, and green peppers, also called a Western. Uh, Santa Fe omelet. No, I'm sorry, that's incorrect. John Garvey, if you know the answer, you're our winner. A Denver omelet. Congratulations! Congratulations, John Garvey. You're Ask Me Another Big Winner. Enjoy your prize. And that is our show. Thank you so much for playing. Check out our podcast at iTunes or Stitcher, and you can find us on Facebook or Twitter at NPR Ask Me Another. And come see us live or be a contestant. Just go to amatickets.org. Ask Me Another's puzzle guru is Art Chung. Hey, my name anagrams to Narc Thug. Our house musician is Jonathan Colton. Now Jolta Cannon. Our puzzles were written by Daniel Thompson, J. Keith Van Stratton, and senior writer Karen Lurie. Ask Me Another's produced by Mike Katzif, Travis Larchuk, Julia Melfi, Lena Mzitsis, Denny Shin, and our intern, Alejandra Vasquez, along with Anya Grunman. We are recorded by Damon Whittemore, Kristen Muller, and David Hurtkin. Ask Me Another was created by Eric Newsom and Jesse Baker. We'd like to thank our home in Brooklyn, New York, The Bell House. Hot Heel Blues. And our production partner, WNYC. I'm Harai Pagonias. Ophira Eisenberg. And this was Ask Me Another from NPR. Next time on Ask Me Another, we take the show to Nashville, and we have more stars than the Grand Old Opry. We have country music star Martina McBride and actor Connie Britton from the TV series Nashville and Friday Night Lights. So join me, Ophira Eisenberg, for NPR's Hour of Puzzles, Word Games, and Trivia. You won't want to miss it.